Henry Hanoski helped lead my beloved Giants to a Super Bowl his rookie season. But more importantly, he is a faithful and devoted community leader. Thank you, Henry, for being our honored guest at Coordinated Health. And thank you for addressing this 2015 selection of Coordinated Health Athletes of the Week. Henry, thank you. I think I'm going to get a couple tickets from this one. That wonderful introduction. My um, your buddy down here, though, he offered uh, he offered me a hundred bucks if I block you, I knock you to the ground. So I might have taken him up on it later at some point. <laughs> but uh, first off, I'd like to start off, start off by thanking Coordinated Health for having me here today to speak to all of you. It's truly an honor and a pleasure to come back to my home state, where my roots are, to give uh, a speech with such that means a lot to me. I'm here today to talk to you about the different stages I went through in my life and how I responded to those situations to help me become the man that I am today. My goal is for each and every one of you to be able to relate to at least one of the examples that I share with you. Life presents all of us with a unique set of circumstances that builds character and shapes us into the people that we are today. Mine started at the age of five. I developed an acute intestinal uh, ab an obstruction that required major emergency surgery. I still remember this, the pain it caused, the running around my house screaming. The following year, my mother, most important person in my life, was in a very severe car accident, leaving her in critical condition for a lengthy time and requiring nine major reconstructive surgeries. As you can imagine, this was a very overwhelming experience for a five and six year old. These traumatic incidents caused me severe anxiety, and I began to develop obsessive compulsive traits. It was debilitating my life's happiness and affecting my everyday life. I was afraid to go to school because I didn't want to leave my mom for fear that something would happen to her. I was hesitant to play football because I feared my strength would hurt somebody. For a long time, I was actually embarrassed to let people know that I had these obsessive tendencies. Thankfully, I had parents who recognized this early on and got me the help I needed to overcome this adversity. With the help that I received at this young age, I learned how to control this and turn it into a positive trait, which propelled me to be relentless in my pursuit for success and also for what lie ahead in my journey. Coupled with all of this, I was, blessed by my, I was blessed and cursed by my father's success. This is a picture of my father when he played for the Cleveland Browns back in the mid-70s uh, at the prime of his career. From day one, I was an instant prodigy. I was the son of the great Henry Hynoski. I was the one that was going to be just as good as him, if not better. The great area football standout who made it to the NFL and was also a great man, and that's what's most important. I had a lot to look up to growing up. I saw the way cross generations admired my father. I was the heir apparent. Some of my oldest memories were, would be when we were sitting down for dinner and we couldn't even have an hour long dinner at a local restaurant without somebody coming up and shaking my dad's hand and telling stories about how great of an athlete he was. And that was really inspiring to me as a young child to see that. It gave me a lot to look up to. Now here's a picture of my dad in his prime playing for Mount Carmel Area High School, one of the most prestigious football programs in the state. And that's me early on in my career at, uh, at Southern Columbia High School, about an hour and a half away from here. I was an instant starter as a freshman from day one. They put me on the fast track. I was following in my father's footsteps immediately. I experienced immediate success, and I even won a state championship as a freshman. Was it pressure? Absolutely. Was it motivation? Yes. Did I do everything I could to live up to these expectations? Yes. But did my parents pressure me to do so? Not one bit. 
Did I want this from within? I sure did. I trained. I started working out when I was 12 years old to get big and strong to get ready to play football. I watched film of NFL greats growing up with my dad. That was a big weekly thing we used to do. The NFL's greatest running backs. We used to watch it and it was on repeat over and over and over again. I begged my father to go out every day and run patterns and do drills and teach me everything that he learned from his father. Going back a few years, my parents recognized this very early that the pressure was on me. They actually did everything they could to divert, the, to divert the attention and the stress. I begged and pleaded with them to play football. All my friends were playing, so why couldn't I? Finally, we came to terms when I was in fifth grade, and once they knew I really wanted it. Not for them, but for me. They supported me mentally, physically, and financially to prepare me for my game. They were also the driving force behind my academic success. I'll tell a little story. Uh, my mom was very upset when I came home uh, and got a 78 on, a, on an algebra test. And needless to say, from there on out, I, I got straight A's. And she wanted me to leave this out of my presentation, but I think it's uh, too funny. She actually chased me around the kitchen with the wooden spoon. So. <laughs> Um, from this point forward, I realized that I had to be successful off the field like I was on the field, and this was a greater than one effort. Everything was going great and its plan. I started as a true, true freshman. We won a state championship. I had a great season. But going into the summer of my sophomore year, devastation hit. At a summer football camp over lunch break, there was, a local, there was a swimming accident at a local stream where we used to go to cool off between sessions, and two of my best friends lost their lives. Very tough to deal with, but we dedicated our entire season to them. Adversity is an event we cannot change or control. What we do control is our response. Champions in sports, in business, and in life, use adversity to their advantage. That quote by Matt McWilliams. We started every game that season with nine men on the field and two angels. We controlled our response, and we fought hard each and every game, never giving up a first down. And we still managed to win a state championship in their honor. State title number two. To this day, I say a prayer to my best friends before every game to protect me and give me strength, letting them know that I wish that they were still out there on the field with me. Junior year, I could single-handedly dominate a game. Every week, I was putting up big numbers and leading our team to lopsided victories. More and more attention came my way, and also more and more pressure. When you're climbing the ladder to success, you are always more hated than loved. You have more enemies than allies. This is the cold hard facts, but it's true. More people would rather see you fall than climb. Don't let it get to you. I didn't. It only continued to motivate me. And here is a picture of my senior year when uh, we were playing up at uh, Northern Pennsylvania at Old Forge. And, uh, the fans put up a big Henry Hu sign to kind of mock me and rub it in my face. Um, first play, went 55 yards for a touchdown, ran for over 200 yards, and we won 55 nothing. So, <laughs> <laughs> got to give it right back to him. I had the drive, the hard work, the respect, and the discipline to succeed. Leading by example, I exemplified my leadership skills to both my teammates and my peers. Training continued, film work continued, and all the other intangibles continued. I would drive to Williamsport every other day to conduct extra training sessions with my trainer, who at that time was a pioneer in core training and helped me develop into the athlete that I am today. By the end of my senior year, I rewrote the record books in rushing and touchdowns. What did this lead to? It led to five consecutive state championships, and I led the pack. 
And that was one of the greatest memories of my high school there, standing there with my best friends holding up, holding up that trophy. The hard work and dedication in high school paid off. I was heavily recruited and known as a blue chip prospect around the state and around the country. I was invited to play the most prestigious all-star games, and I accepted a full scholarship to the University of Pittsburgh. I was riding high, and I was on top of the world. I felt like nothing could stop me at this point. Well, needless to say, reality set in pretty quick. Those are my career uh, rushing stats at Southern Columbia High School. And as you could see, the drastic decrease when I got to college. It was quite the humbling experience. Um, reality set in really quickly my freshman year. Every single player was performing at my level. I was no longer the standout anymore. I was just one of the many. There were nine of us who were redshirted our freshman year. We practiced day in and day out to get better, to make the team better. But what did I get out of it? If you ask me that, well, if you ask me that question my freshman year, I would say not a thing. But if you ask me that answer today, my answer will be quite different. In high school, I was known as Hynomite. I was the leader, and, and once I got to college, my nickname changed. Hank the Tank, Hammer and Hank, the Polish Plow, the Blocking Machine, you name it, I had them all. <laughs> I became one of the many. I became a role player to propel both individual and team success. I went from being the star to the unsung hero, the guy who does the dirty work to better my team, to become greater than one. We went on to win Big East titles. We won bowl games. But adversity struck once again. This is a photo of my teammates and I with our head coach, Dave Wanstead, after he was uh, forced to resign at his press conference. I had one year of eligibility left, and I was on the cusp of achieving my MBA. I was already graduated. I was working on continuing my education, getting ready for life after football. God willing, I didn't make it to my dream. I was preparing for my final collegiate season and also for the NFL draft. I had a choice to make. Play one more year for a new coach who underutilized the fullback position and opted for a spread offense, or declare early surrendering my senior season with my best friends and my teammates. After doing plenty of research with my family, I decided it was in my best interest to declare for the NFL draft. I was invited to the combine and projected as the top fullback in the draft, projected to be taken anywhere in the middle rounds. I thought this was a surefire thing, first fullback taken, third, fourth round, on the fast track right to the NFL, my lifelong dream. Adversity hit yet again. I pulled my hamstring in my first 40-yard dash at the Combine, which if you aren't aware of what the Combine is, it's a football player's biggest job interview of his life. I was unable to finish my performance at the Combine, and I lost a ton of credibility. To make matters worse, I was unable to redeem myself at Pittsburgh's Pro Day a few weeks later due to the nature and the significance of the injury. All I had to do was leave it in fate's hands and wait for the draft. The months leading up to the draft, I got myself healthy and continued to work out in preparation for becoming drafted. Unfortunately, none of the NFL executives and scouts were aware of the recovery and the training regimen that I underwent. I was not drafted. I was completely devastated and felt I could not take much more heartache and disappointment. I felt very sorry for myself, and I actually contemplated quitting. And I even told my, my family that I was considering this. After a few days, I decided I'd been through too much and worked too hard to give up on my dream. I was not going down, and I would find a way to rise back up. As luck would have it, the NFL Players Association was on strike, and the owners declared a lockout. This prevented, from any free agent, this prevented any free agents from being signed and also delayed any NFL activities, spring workouts, spring training, etc. Once again, my dream was delayed and put on hiatus. So I did what I always did my whole life. 
I continued to wait and I continued to work for my only chance. After the lockout ended, everything was happening very fast. I entertained calls from roughly 15 teams that wanted me to play fullback for them. I chose to play for the New York Giants as an undrafted free agent. It was a bittersweet day for me. I knew I had a long road to prove myself to make the team, and I did. I worked harder than I ever did my entire life. Hard work paid off once again, and I made the team, and I actually ended up becoming a starter. Everything was happening so quickly. Just a very short time ago, I was sitting at home, and now here I was in the NFL living my dream. I wasn't just playing in the NFL. I was starting, I was having immediate success, but most importantly, we were winning games. The whole experience seemed surreal, and still looking back on it to this day, it's still, it's still surreal. Before I knew it, we were playoff bound, and our team hit stride at the exact perfect time. We kept winning epic games, and after a classic overtime win at Candlestick Park against the 49ers, we were Super Bowl bound. I remember after that game, I was, my chin was all patched up, I had to get stitches, I was, I was, uh, I was a mess, but uh, it, it was one of the best days of my life. Even though I was hurting and I was really sore, I couldn't believe we were going to the Super Bowl. Everything was a whirlwind. There I was, playing against the New England Patriots for the Super Bowl. Oh, I thought I lost my ring. It's in my pocket. <laughs> Should probably have it on. <laughs> this was on the same field where I pulled my hamstring at the combine and saw my NFL dreams fading away. I played the best game of the year. I played my best game of the year, making devastating blocks, catching first downs and recovering a fumble to eventually save the game. Everything came full circle, total redemption. 53 players from 53 different backgrounds with 53 different personalities and 53 different stories found a way to work together and put the team above self to reach the pinnacle of success in the sports world. No individuals, no superstars, just us, our team, the New York Giants. It was the best feeling in the world, standing on stage with my parents, holding the Lombardi Trophy as confetti continuously poured down over us. I didn't know whether to scream with joy or cry with happiness, but this was truly a greater than one experience for a lifetime. Thank you all for your time. I really appreciate it. And I'll be looking forward to answering any questions that you may have at the uh, conclusion of the program. Thank you.